One last section of 2.2, and that's to talk about absolute value functions and absolute value equations. Um, just a couple properties I want to start with, but before we even do that, let's just review what absolute value means, right? We have this symbol, right? And sometimes IB will call it uh, the modulus. But it's really just a measure of distance from zero. Right, which is why it's always positive, and that's our first property here. Right, the absolute value of some number will always be positive because it's kind of talking about a distance, and distance can't be negative. As a result, of course, that's kind of our second property, is that the absolute value of a negative number is the same as the absolute value of the opposite of that number. So to say, like, the absolute value of negative two and the absolute value of two are the same, right? Because it's distance, and I'm still, whoops, I'm still walking two units, say, for example, in some direction. Our third property, we have to have some sort of zero property. So that's to say, if the absolute value is zero, well, then our distance is zero, right? Well, whether I call it positive or negative zero, zero is zero is zero. Um, and so if the absolute value of a is zero, then a itself is zero. Uh, because of three, from three, it follows that the absolute value of a minus b is zero implies that a equals b. And the proof for that is as easy as just employing step three. So I'll leave that up for you guys to figure out. couple other rules we want to define our arithmetic operations on absolute value so products and quotients are going to work just like normal products and quotients if I can multiply outside the uh, absolute value I can multiply inside the absolute value likewise I can do this with division with of course the catch that b can't be zero of course cannot divide by zero it's a little bit different for uh, addition and subtraction, right? For addition and subtraction, um, it's not strictly equal, actually. We wind up having this kind of an inequality. Right? So the absolute value of a plus b oops, is actually less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. I'm going to give you some time on your own to kind of think about this, but it's something we're going to try to talk about in class, is why is this true? Can we come up with some example that shows this to be true? That's something maybe we'll explore in class a little bit. Likewise with subtraction, except with subtraction we're just going to flip the sign of the inequality. And same thing, I want to figure out why this is true. What kind of an example can I come up with to illustrate the fact that this is true? And our final property is going to be important later on in this video, and that's to say if uh, the absolute value of A is less than or equal to B, well that implies that my distance, right, if I think about distance, the absolute value of a, my distance from 0 to a, falls within some range. And that range is given by wherever b lies, right? So here's kind of like my cutoff point for b, right? So absolute value less than that distance b means I'm just going to fall within negative b and positive b. So I could write it this way. Right? This would also be valid if I didn't have the or equal to part. Uh, likewise, if I said greater than b or greater than or equal to b, well, now I want to talk about my distance from 0 to a lying outside of kind of that boundary where b is. So the way we could write this would be to say, I want to make sure I'm actually writing this the right way, is to say a less than or equal to negative b, right, because I want to go beyond negative b, or a greater than or equal to b, because I want to go beyond b. So this is going to become an important property later on. 
we're going to let these sit and we're going to come back to them. But for now, let's talk about as what happens as a function. If I have a function that is defined as the absolute value function, it's actually a piecewise function. And it's the piecewise function given by x when my entry is positive. So it just spits out the number itself if it's positive. Or the opposite of that number if x is negative. So this kind of sounds weird, right? Because I can't really produce a negative number, and I'm not producing a negative number. Um, there's actually kind of a double negative situation. So for example, if I had x equal to negative 2, this is going to spit out negative negative 2, which is positive 2. So that's all it is. Um, and the graph of that, well, it's a piecewise function. So we're going to graph x for, whoops, x for x positive. I guess it's not going to straighten out. And negative x for x negative. All right, so you can kind of see by looking at it, the domain is all real numbers. And again, by looking at it, we can see that my range is all positive real numbers. So y greater than or equal to 0. So here are my domain and range. Generally speaking, if we have functions, we can talk about a transformation of functions, right? Generally speaking, I can think about my absolute value or modulus function in this form. x minus h plus k. This should look familiar. Right? This should maybe remind you of when we talked about quadratics, right, it should remind you of this. My question would be, can I use my intuition here and say that these mean the same thing? Yeah, I can, and I should. All the A's, H's, and K's do exactly the same thing. Use that to your advantage. So for example, if I want to sketch the graph of 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 2, pretty easy, right? Let me draw my parent function just so I have it. I've got it handy. Yeah, there we go. So here's my parent function. This is just the absolute value of x. If we think back to our quadratic investigation, I'm going to have a horizontal shift to the right 1 because of my minus 1, my 1. I'm going to have a vertical shift down 2 because of my minus 2. All right, so we can kind of think about this vertex as being at 1, negative 2. So I'm going to plot that first. My coefficient is 2, which is positive. Right, so this is going to be concave up. And it's going to be scaled by a factor of 2, which is going to tell me kind of each of these slope pieces, each of these lines, instead of having a slope of 1, as you can kind of see is going on is going to have a slope of 2. Oops. So I'm going to have this type of thing, and then I'm going to have this type of thing, like that. So in purple is my function. This is one of the big things with IB. It's how I like to teach IB, is to say, let's... um use our prior knowledge, right? Let's use what we've already learned. We've already learned about function transformations and wouldn't you know, it applies to here too. So let's use what we've already learned and use it to our advantage.